Welcome to a new video on Analytic Designer. Today I'd like to talk about the Data Change Insight feature that allow an SAC user to auto-discover significant data changes in an application within a particular period. A user can be notified by email, by SAC notification or by mobile app notification. In my case, I start with an email that I receive in which I can see the top three data changes for stock market indexes. From this email, I can directly open the application by clicking on this button. So let me describe the application. So on the top left, we have six charts that represent some stock market indexes. So for instance, you have the NASDAQ index or the Dow Jones index and so on. Then on the right, you have a list of snapshots and I'll explain later uh, what they are. And finally here, you have two buttons which allow you to compare a uh, different kind of snapshots. So first, let me click on this button and let's see the kind of information we can have. So what we see here is for each chart, we can see the level of subscription. What does it mean? So basically, when you want to use a data change insight feature, you need to subscribe each chart to a certain level. So in this case, the NASDAQ uh, has a high importance level. Uh, the S&P 500 is unsubscribed and the Dow Jones, for instance, is uh, using the uh, standard subscription. So, and plus it has a, a, a range and this range is uh, defined here. So here it's a minimum is 35,400 and the maximum is infinity. So you can see for the other charts, uh, the different information here. So now how do you subscribe? So it's very simple. So if I select a chart here, I have this entry that I change insight. And this is where I uh, set the level of subscription. So in my case, for the NASDAQ, I choose the high importance, but you can choose also subscribe and unsubscribe. So what we have seen before is for the S&P 500, this one is unsubscribed. And you can see here, and we saw also for the Dow Jones, uh, the level of subscription, the standard level. And if I check the set subscription range, I can see that it's uh, a fixed value range. And when I want to be notified when it's superior to 35, 1,400. After I did my subscription for my different charts, then I can schedule my data and change inside. And to do that, I go here and I click on this button. And I have a, a dialogue uh, which opens uh, with different details. So first, uh, I have the name of my application. Then I have the start date for my scheduling. I can choose the different kind of the maximum insight I have. I have. So top three, top four, top seven, etc. In my case, I choose top three. Then I can choose the type of notification. It can be email or mobile app or only email or only mobile app. Uh, I have a few other options here. And finally, I can uh, choose who will receive the notification. In my case, it's me, but I can, if I want, add other SAC users. And also I can add recurrence to my schedule. So the recurrence pattern could be daily, weekly, or monthly. And I can choose also uh, end dates if I want, or a repetition. If I choose a repetition, I can specify the number of occurrences. I will not click here, but I will show you the result directly in the uh, calendar of ACC. And you can see I have a uh, schedule, uh, uh, the application here, 
And if I click on one of these occurrence, I can see the details. So for this one, for instance, I can see uh, that uh, the status is successful. It was run on August 18 at 6.15. And the result was sent to, uh, to me. Uh, and I receive uh, the notification by email and for the top three changes. If I go to another one, for instance, this one, uh, we can see that the status is still open because uh, August 20 is not uh, is uh, in the future, and so I will uh, this task will will be run at 6:15 uh, in August 20. Now let's switch to the design mode of the application and let's see how you can implement the data change inside feature. So the first thing you need to do is basically to create a technical component called data change inside. I created one here, and if I click on it, I can see the details, I can see the name of my technical component, and I can see the type of my versioning. So let me explain why we need this version. So each time you execute a data change inside task, uh, there is a snapshot uh, that is created. And then this snapshot is compared to the pre with the previous snapshot. But if you want to have a, a good comparison, you need to have these two snapshots needs to have the same version. If they are different version, then no data change uh, will be found. Now let's have a look at the code associated to the get information button. So if I click here, I can see the code here. So what I did is basically I use first uh, I use the API get version on the data change insight and it gave me the version which is number which is two and then I display the level of subscription and the range of subscription. To do that, I use the get data change insight method on the chart and the get subscription level and get subscription range. And this gave me the two uh, information. And I did that for each chart. This is a way I can see uh, the level of description of my uh, different charts. In my case, I define this level of subscription with the user interface, but as you can see here, you can also do it via scripting because there is this set subscription level method which allow you to do that. So let's come back to the application and let's see how we can get some information on the snapshot created. So if I click on this button, I can see the last five snapshots created during the data change inside task. And I can see the list here also in my application. So what I can do first is I can compare two snapshots. So I select these two and I click on this compare two snapshots. What I see is the result here. So I can see that the insight length is equal to three in this case. So if I open this one, I can see the three uh, values that has been sent. So there is a type here, it's a value change type, and the content is this one. So this is what we see here. Uh, and what I can do also is compare the current status of my application with one of the snapshots. So let's say I want to compare with this one. I click on compare with current. And again here, I can see the inside length equal three. So I have three entries and I can see the details here. And again, the type is value change. So now let's see the code associated to this snapshot. So the first thing I did is to click on the button and I get the list of snapshot created. Uh, so here is the code. So what I do is basically I use a data change inside technical component and I use this list recent snapshot dates method where I specify the number of snapshots I want. Oh, so here it's five snapshots, and then I just have to uh, display them in my uh, console. Then 
what I did is I, I compared two different snapshots. How, how I did that is basically I again use this technical component that I changed inside and I use the compare snapshot method where I specify the two snapshots selected in my list. And this gave me a, a result. And then from this result, I could get the insight and I could get also uh, the length of this insight here. And uh, I also display in my console the details of this insight. And then finally, I just display the results in my text area. I did the same for the comparison with the current status. The only difference here is I use this method compare application state with snapshot. And I just pass the snapshot uh, uh, that I, I wanted to, to compare with the current status. The rest of the code is the same. In conclusion, we have seen how to use data change inside feature. So we have seen how to compare different snapshots. So we can compare two snapshots or we can compare the current state with a specific snapshot. We also see how to get the version of the snapshot. And we see also how to list the recent uh, snapshot created. There are also three other methods I didn't demo, but the first one is is run by snapshot generation and this method just returns true if a snapshot task is running. The second one is the open subscription value. So basically, if you use it via scripting, you can open the uh, subscription dialogues, uh, dialogue window. And finally, you have the save snapshot, which allow you to create via scripting a new snapshot. But just bear in mind that you can save a maximum of one snapshot per day and per application. I hope this video was helpful and I want to say thank you for watching.